All right, how do we define variables in this JavaFX language? Well, variables can be defined with two keywords, either var or def. Uh, these two uh, are similar but different in one important aspect. When we use def, we're defining a variable once and never being allowed to resign it. Versus value allows us to declare a variable but also allows us to change the value of that variable at any point. So in other words, if I define a variable called instructor using def and I assign it the value of the string uh, literal gym, I can't ever change instructor to be of some other string. Versus using var to define start, I can assign it the value 9 but then later on change it to some other value. If you want, you can kind of think of def as being a final in Java terms. Like in Java, there are different types of variables. We have instance variables that are defined inside of a class. We might also call those um, attributes or properties of a class. We have what are known as local variables. These are typically defined in code blocks, for example, inside of a for loop. We also have something known as a script variable. Script variables are not really available or there's no real good synonym to use in uh, the Java community because in a way these kind of act as, if you will, almost global variables. A variable can be defined inside a script yet not have to be part of any class or block. That's what a script variable is. Uh, variables can be typed explicitly, but they don't have to be. Uh, for example, I can define variable y as being of type integer and then here also assigning it an initial value of 9. That's explicit typing. However, I can go ahead and define a variable x and you'll notice there is no type there, no initial value. It's not until the actual initial value is assigned that the type for that variable gets assigned. Again, that goes to that compile time or what we call statically typed compile time uh, working that makes JavaFX a bit different than Java. So here we're doing implicit typing. By the way, just because we're allowing for implicit typing doesn't mean the type can change. So for example, trying to set x now equal to this string, well that creates problems. That's going to create a, an incompatible type and a syntax error. There's also a neat little feature when defining variables, or for that matter using def to define variables, uh, there is this little on replace clause that uh, allows us that when we define a variable to set up uh, some code to run each time the value of a variable is changed. So for example, when I look at uh, var y and I establish that as an integer and I set its initial value to 9, I can use the on replace clause to say now go run this block of code each and every time that variable y's value is set. So, for example, by using this print line y now squirrely bracket to y, what we're doing is going to print out the value of y every time y changes. In fact, even in the initialization, that causes that code block to execute, and it would print y is now 9. When we set y to 10, that would force that code block to run and print y is now 10. JavaFX also comes with three pseudo variables. Uh, if you will, these are built in variables that allow us to get some information about the environment in which our JavaFX script is running. Underscore profile underscore gives us an indication of what type of environment we're running in. Is it mobile? Is it desktop? Is it going to be running in a browser? That information can be very, very useful in particular to give us more information about maybe uh, the capabilities of what our user interface should take advantage of. For example, height and width of the screen underscore file underscore and underscore directory underscore gives us some information in our JavaFX script about uh, where we're running from. What's the actual uh, file script uh, file name that is uh, being run and or what directory is that script being run from. On to functions. Functions are going to be providing a lot of the work that's going to be happening in our JavaFX scripts. Functions can be declared in a couple places. They can be defined inside a class. These are called instance functions. And in that way, functions resemble what we would call a method in Java. However, functions can also just be defined inside of any kind of .fx file. These are called script level functions. In other words, functions don't have to be assigned to or part of any class. They can operate independent. Here's an example of a function where we're passing in a couple of operands. We're taking those operands, in this case, adding each operand to the other, and then multiplying them together, giving us a square of the sum of those two operands. 
Notice that when we're doing that, we can then just call on another little piece of JavaFX code to actually call on that function, passing in those two operands. So no class involved here, and this is valid JavaFX script. By the way, you might notice that the last thing that's computed inside of a function is what is actually returned, and that doesn't have to be explicitly annotated. In other words, we don't have to provide in there a return keyword to note that. However, the return value, value the return type, the parameters and their types, they can all be explicitly set using JavaFX syntax as well. Here's the same function as defined earlier, except now you'll see that the parameters are explicitly typed, the return value is explicitly typed, and the actual return keyword is in there signifying what explicitly is going to be returned out of this function. All optional, again, being uh, the fact that JavaFX is using that compile time typing, the functions can compile time type themselves just as well as any variable can. Classes define things, either real or conceptual, and just as in Java, JavaFX classes do the same kind of work. Uh, as in Java 2, we can define instances, or I should say create instances or objects out of these classes that represent those real or conceptual things. In JavaFX, classes have instance variables, they have functions versus methods, as we know in Java. They also have something known as init and post init uh, optional blocks of code. Now, in JavaFX, we don't have uh, a constructor, so to speak. So these init and post init uh, functions sort of operate, if you will, as our constructor capability, similar to what we have in Java, allowing us to initialize our objects or perform some sort of activity as the initialization of an object from a class occurs. Classes can extend other classes in JavaFX. In fact, JavaFX actually supports multiple inheritance of JavaFX classes. A JavaFX class can also extend a Java class. Now here's where that uh, multiple inheritance breaks down a little bit. JavaFX classes can multiply inherit from many JavaFX classes, but you can only extend one Java class. You can also have a JavaFX class implement multiple Java interfaces. Now JavaFX calls this extending a Java interface, but it works the same way as we would think of as implementing in Java. So extending an interface forces that class to implement the interface. Now inside of Java, whenever we extend another class or if we implement an interface, we simply uh, provide the overriding methods inside of our new class to override what was in the existing class or override the declaration of a method inside of an interface. In JavaFX you have to be a little bit more explicit. JavaFX kind of takes the uh, C sharp C++ way of doing uh, overriding. So if you want to have a method in a JavaFX class which overrides a superclass or implements a method from an interface, you have to actually use the override keyword to specify that. And we'll see an example of that here on our next slide.